Hi, welcome to the latest developer blog for Democracy 4. Uh, my name's Clef, I'm the programmer and the designer on the game. As we do this, it is September 2021. Uh, the game is still in early access, but you can, um, you can get it now obviously on Steam, GOG, Humble Store, Epic Store, um, and kind of direct through us as well. Um, we're coming sort of towards the end of early access, I think, soon. Um, I'll talk about that a bit more near the end of the video. There's some, some other stuff that, that uh, is going to go in. Um, before that, I'm going to show you some stuff that is new in the game. I'm just going to start a new game as USA. Just take the defaults and show some stuff. So um, there are two new policies that are in by popular demand, um, one of which is workers dividends and one of which is uh, banning cryptocurrency. So I need to remember where they are, where they are. Um, it might actually be hard to do at the, mo at the moment. Um, in fact, I should show off the fact um, that, oh wow, I found a bug, look at that. That, yeah, oh my God. Oh my god, I found it I found a live bug. Gonna have to fix that now. Um ha happily though, if I just do that, I can go to it. Anyway, I'll fix that. I'll fix that at some point <laughs> at some point. So uh, this is an impulse you can put in. Um you can basically ban Bitcoin and um other stuff like it. There's various reasons that you might want to do that. Um I'm not a big fan of it at all, um, because of the environmental impact. Um also, there's an argument that it makes crime easier. You know, there's there's all sorts of arguments about this, and it's like one of those hot button issues that I don't want to sort of like wade into. Other than the fact that we've added it as a policy, because obviously at the moment China is is clamping down on cryptocurrencies a lot, uh, and there is talk of, of other countries um, doing similar stuff. Um, I know um, here in the UK there are some stockbrokers that used to trade. Um, crypto that uh, now will not allow you to do so because of the volatility. Um, anyway, it's a tool in there. It's going to upset liberals and it's going to reduce liberalism. Now you might say that why do, why does it upset liberals? And we have to have this this long ongoing. God, I hate green screen stuff. Um, we have to go back to this long ongoing thing of, of what is liberalism and what are liberals in the game. If you think of liberals as um, a cross between what people think of as liberal in the US but also libertarianism, so freedom. So um, if you're a libertarian, cryptocurrency is amazing because it's like the currency that the government can control and stuff like that. Um, it's individual freedom um, to do that. If someone wants to invent cryptocurrency and sell it and you want to buy it, then what's the problem kind of thing? So you will upset liberals, but you will also reduce liberalism. And this is a thing I'll come back to because a lot more things reduce liberalism now. So you're basically taking away people's freedom here. You're saying you are not allowed in this country to trade cryptocurrency or mine it or whatever, depending on the slider. Um, so, so that reduces people's freedom. That doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing. We, we kind of take away people's freedom all the time. Um, in the UK, you don't have the freedom to own a machine gun, um, for example. Uh, you don't have the freedom to, to drive a car without a, a, a state-issued license. Um, we do that a lot. So it kind of, kind of makes it sound bad when you say you take away someone's freedom. It, it depends on your point of view. But anyway, it's a policy in there. You can ban cryptocurrency. Obviously, it completely trashes the, the adoption of cryptocurrency. Um, and you can tax it. Like, um, we have somewhere... Uh, yeah, we have cryptocurrency taxation. So if it really takes off, you can just tax it. <laughs> Um, obviously, that will also slightly reduce it and slightly upset liberals. Basically, this upsets everyone, but you make some money, um, which is like a lot of government policy, really. Anyway, whatever. Um, so it's a, that's a new policy that's in. Um, the other one that I want to talk about um, is workers' dividends. So, again, like every policy in the game, it's not one thing. Um, people say, oh, what about this? What about adding that? And sometimes their ideas are like already implied to be included in policies that are already in the game so workers dividends is kind of like hard socialism 
what we're talking about here is forcing companies maybe at a low slider level encouraging at a high level forcing at a very high level forcing the overwhelming majority of profits um, to be shared with workers so at the moment um, you know I run a limited company my little games company if I had employees um, I don't have to give them a share of the profits um, by law I may choose to do so obviously but but there are no incentives for me to do so and certainly no no law compelling me to do so um, and if you are um, fairly hard left I would say um, then you may believe that that should be the case this was actually proposed recently um, in the last election in my country in the UK by the Labour Party wanted to effectively take 10% of the shares of, of, of all companies and have the dividends from that 10% um, give, given to the workers. Um, obviously capitalists detest this because you, you are effectively seizing their property. Um, it puts up socialism because like people will see this happen, you know, that they will go, yes, I am getting a share of the profits and, um, you know, I see that in my bank balance, I'm happy about that, makes socialists happy, obviously. Self-employed, I mean, I'm assuming that kind of such policies would eventually affect like all businesses. So self-employed includes really small businesses like, like mine. So um, they're not happy about it. Obviously high earnings go down um, because some of your juicy dividends get given to the workers. Um, trade unionists love it and, and poor people are better off, obviously. Um, foreign investment down because this is a worrying step from the point of view of um, a foreign company wanting to set up factories or offices in your country because it's like if they will seize 10% of the shares of domestic companies where is it going to end do they do they get 10% of my factory that I build um, you know so it would it would dissuade foreign investment um, I'm not saying this is a good or bad policy but um, you know it has its upsides and its downsides I guess but the reason it's been added to the game is to have some kind of like hard socialism because um, you know on the far left over here we have like Stalin and Lenin um, uh, let's not debate um, whether or not that was true socialism or whatever um, but even Jeremy Corbyn so it was this was his policy this was his Chancellor's policy and uh, it was pointed out to me that we don't have enough policies that really go for socialism um, in the game, which is probably true. So that's that's a new one that's in there as a result of that. Um, I'm going to do my stuff out of order now because I'm actually going to talk about liberalism. So if I quit the main menu, I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. Let's, let's see if I quit to the main menu and I go to Compass. Um, so this is where I've been playing, I think, and where I've ended up. And that is where all of you end up in the latest version. So what this does, if you if you click online, is um, it checks the kind of database of uh, every election win that's been played with the current version of the game for each country and plots them. And as you can see, everyone's liberal. <laughs> okay, this is something I, I, I'm trying to fix and um, have some things that push that push up there. Arguably, a lot of modded countries, if you put in some countries, they're going to be really not liberal, like um, like I, I suspect Turkey would not be as liberal. Um, you know, I mean, ultimately here, we've kind of assuming we've got like the Taliban and stuff like this. So like, we're trying to do the whole range. And I think people get slightly annoyed saying um, everything seems to be, li the game is liberal because the developers are liberal. It's like, um, not really, but most of the countries that we model are pretty liberal um, and a lot more liberal than they used to be even in my lifetime. Um, like gay marriage is a thing in the UK, it wasn't when I was born. We've become a lot more liberal in the UK. Um, there are states in the US um, where um, cannabis is legal. I mean, that's pretty liberal. And um, like gender transition is, is a thing that is not... Um, massively unusual and it's not outlawed or anything like that I mean there, you know like there used to be countries that, that would ban homosexuality including England um, and, and until relatively recently so we have to model everything and the kind of developed world has moved to become very very liberal 
slightly bizarre to see the UK more liberal than France there. But don't forget, this is how people are playing the game. So it could be that um, it's easier to win as a liberal. Um, I, I don't know, is Canada the most liberal country out, out of all of them? I, I think it is fair to say that South Korea is probably in the right place on, on, on that point from what I know. Um, but anyway, what I'm trying to do is change a lot of policies. Let me just jump back into it um, again um, to affect that because we don't have enough stuff that affects this. And where you can see it is if you look at the liberal group and then you look on membership and then influences, it's this stuff that makes people more or less um, liberal. So some crime stuff, for example, if you have violent crime, that tends to make people less liberal because they're like, I have my principles, um, you know, I care a lot about blah, blah, blah. But people keep smashing up my house and breaking into my car, so can we not bring back the death penalty, for example? I mean, that's like an extreme version, right? Um, but uh, but societies with high crime tend to um, be less liberal. Um, and we got other stuff in here, like CCTV cameras are not particularly liberal things. It's the state monitoring you, right? Um, so there's a bunch of stuff in there. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that I think this stuff isn't extreme enough on the negative end. Um, so people are not as, uh, people are too liberal in the game. I think I'm working on it. The latest version um, improves that and it will improve more. Um, something I'm going to talk about uh, just while I'm here is this stuff. So. Um, you see, you can see like loyalty, experience, effectiveness, campaigning. These are the attributes of your ministers. So here's a minister, yeah. Maybe I'm looking here and thinking, um, they're not massively loyal. Can I replace them with someone more loyal? The, the trouble is these have colors. They go green, then down to orange, then down to red. Um, but we never used to have numbers in there. So um, so now you, now you do. So I can look at this minister and go, their loyalty here in the tooltip there is 54% and then I can actually like you know compare other loyalty you can sort by loyalty or, or anything by the way um, that's that's new someone suggested that it would be good to put that in there and I did that uh, and I'm quite pleased about it something else by the way that is new is you can sort this stuff like we've got loads of taxes here so they're sorted by name but stuff you can't do gets put in a separate sorted by name list at the bottom okay but you can also sort by um, the political capital um, cost to introduce. That's only three, um, that there is 16, and then 18, you know, then these are the ones that we can't do. Um, you can also sort by happiness. Banning cryptocurrency is really unpopular, apparently. Um, so in other words, people who care don't like that policy. A lot of people don't care. Public tax returns appears to be really unpopular. Micro generation grants, everyone's happy. Um, th there is, a, you know, no downside from a, from a, a, a voter point of view. There could be other downsides. Obviously, there's a cost. Anyway, you can sort these things um, using this now, and that's kind of cool. I'm glad that's gone in. Um, so I'm going to show you, <laughs> I'm going to show you a stupid thing that I'm really proud about, and then talk about like early access and modding and stuff like that. So let me load in a game. I've got a Korean game, Korean pre-election game. Um, oh no, hang on, I edited it, didn't I? Oh, what a dork. No, no, I can't do this, I can't do this. Let me pick, it, let me pick another country. Um, actually, I may have to do that one because, um, because Germany loses. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this. Okay, okay, oh, how annoying. Um, right, I'll show you what I mean. The colour of this country, uh, of this party, is black. No one selects black as a party colour, except some players do. Um, so I got told that a new feature that I just put in didn't work in that case. So it's fixed. Now I'll show you what I mean. So it's just before the election. Um, if, you're, <laughs> if the colour of your party was black, you could never read this text. So that's fixed now, um, thankfully. Um, and... I'll do it and then I'll explain um, why it's annoying because they don't look as good in black. So here we are counting the election. We did incredibly well, United Republicans. So I added a stupid thing. 
Right, so I added I added balloons um, that float up. Um, some of the balloons are always white and some of them are, uh, are the colour of your party. It's quite crude. Um, but anyway, so um, I had to put in special code actually that if, if the colour of your party is black or close to black, we fade the background to grey instead of the normal uh, black because then you couldn't see your own balloons. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I like the balloons. I think they're good. I mean, why not, right? Um, maybe I'll do confetti at some point. Anyway, so um, I'm just going to talk a, a little bit about something else that went in uh, quite quickly, which is modded prereqs. So there are certain things that happen in, in, the, in the game. Um, so let me get an event to pop up. Um, so yeah, so this has happened. Tinderbox, right? Um, now it could be there's a lot going on isn't there <laughs> um, it could be that that event should only happen in certain circumstances if a country has a certain thing now an example event would be if you have um, something that happens by the coast like you know immigrants um, landing by boat or whatever um, when you do a mod and you add an event you can uh, def you can um, check whether or not a country has a coastline there's a special like little line of text you put in your mod and it will sort of say um, a prerequisite for this event happening is that you have a coastline and there's a whole list of these things you can do if you're a modder um, and I've changed the game so you can add your own so you can add your own prerequisites so a prerequisite um, for a particular thing might be uh, <laughs> We've we got a lot of things like earthquakes and cyclones and stuff like that. It, it could be like a plague of locusts or something, which only happens to certain countries. So you could you could define a new prerequisite, plague of locusts, and, uh, you know, country suffers from locusts. And then you could create a mod where that would occasionally pop up. And it will only pop up for your country that you've modded or other people who also add the same thing. Um, Anyway, it's a thing that people wanted because otherwise you have to hack the original game files and I want to make modding really easy. So, um, I can't believe what's going on here in Korea. It's just everything. Lost technological advantage. Um, but we have driverless cars. It's fine. We only just squeak through, I think. It's interesting. Interesting phenomena. Anyway, um, so uh, I, I want more support for modding. Um, at the moment, we, we do ha we do have support for modding, obviously, and then there are loads of mods if you go to the Steam Workshop. So if you go here, um, oh, that's a test mod. Um, I don't have Steam running at the moment, so you can't do all this stuff. But like, we do have support for creating um, a mod and submitting it to the Steam Workshop so everyone else can play it and editing your submission and stuff like that. And for browsing... Um, mods that you happen to have on your local PC. What I want to do is make it really easier um, for you to um, see what mods are available if you don't have Steam and you don't have Steam Workshop because we have a lot of players on Epic and stuff like that. Um, so I want it that anyone can um, use any feature regardless where they bought the game. We do that for achievements so like our achievement system is built into the game and it just talks to Steam. Um, but those achievements, you, you, all our achievements pop up regardless where you bought the game. Um, I think that's really important because you're not giving people a lesser version. Um, anyway, so I want to do that. I'm going to get that done. And then we have Chinese and South Korean translations coming, hopefully in two days time. And then I'll put them in and update the game. Might might do Japanese as well. So basically we've got to put in um, South Korean, Chinese, maybe Japanese. Um, and I want to do a lot more um, mod support. And then I'm thinking about maybe uh, coming out of early access and declaring the game released soon-ish. Um, I'll probably do another video before then. Um, but we're getting there. Um, it will be coming out then. It doesn't mean we won't be updating the game. I'll still be doing updates to uh, tweak the game, to fix little bugs as they're reported. Um, and also to um, like improve the balance of the game as we get more and more players. Um, and I don't know what we can do in terms of like expansions or anything like that. I haven't decided at all. Um, but I thought I'd mention that like we're coming to the end of early access now. I, I've had a few people say the game looks finished. Is it um, when when is it being released? Um, I mean, it's an arbitrary thing. Um, the game is not going to change dramatically 
um, outside of modding and language support. Um, so if, you, if you're holding off, you know, you might as well get it. <laughs> it's up to you. Anyway, thank you for watching. This is Democracy 4. You can get it now. If you do like it, please leave us a positive review because um, we really appreciate that. A lot of people don't think to leave a, a review on Steam. It's really easy to do. Um, and thank you to everyone who's doing that. And if you've got any comments on anything that happened in this video that I mentioned, um, I'll read all the comments below. Uh, and please like and subscribe, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Tell your favourite YouTuber to cover the game. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.